An Israeli transportation company has apologized after dozens of Palestinian passengers were kicked off a bus in order to make room for Jewish riders. As reported by the Israeli outlet Haaretz, the company claims that a group of Jewish passengers, including one who allegedly impersonated a government official, pressured a new driver to remove the Palestinians mid-route and drive away. This just after bombing in the Gaza Strip killed at least 44 people, including 15 children, earlier this week. Critics of Israel say U.S. media coverage of the fighting unjustly places blame on Palestine. Human rights lawyer Kasim Rashid tweeted, quote, Israel preemptively bombed Gaza and killed at least 31 people, including 15 children, and this is how the New York Times frames it. Palestinian Islamic Jihad militants fired a barrage of rockets at Jerusalem in fighting that has killed at least 31 people. This is deadly propaganda, he, he says. Joining us now to discuss is host of the Katie Halper Show and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast. Katie Halper, welcome back, Katie. Thanks so much for having me. Now, this unfortunately feels like new headline old story with respect to how uh, the you know, so-called conflicts in the region are you know, portrayed as very neutral or uh, disproportionately at the fault of Palestinians. What do you make of this recent one? Well, I just had to update some of the numbers, which is uh, that now 17 children have died, and it's very possible that more injury, more people will succumb to their injuries. Um, so we have 17 children who have been killed. At least 46 Palestinians have been killed. 350 have been wounded. And I know that sometimes I think we're relieved to hear that people are wounded and injured as opposed to killed. And we're relieved to hear the number of casualties as opposed to deaths. But we should also make sure we keep in mind that often these people who are wounded, they've lost limbs. I mean, one of the victims, uh, a young girl uh, named... Um, Rahaf Salman, for instance, she just lost both of her feet and her mm. right hand. Um, and I think that, you know, part of the reason I was interested in looking at these two stories side by side, the Israeli bombing of Gaza uh, and the bus uh, event when people, Palestinians were literally kicked off a bus so that it, uh, because some Israeli Jews did not want to be on the bus with them is just to, to emphasize what that this is an apartheid state. Israel is indeed an apartheid state. And saying that is not anti-Semitic. I mean, a lot of people try to weaponize anti-Semitism and claim that, that saying that is anti-Semitic. But unfortunately for those people, we have organizations like B'Tselem, an Israeli organization, which itself says that it's an apartheid state. So there's really no denying it. And in terms of the media bias, uh, I have a bunch of examples that we can get into. But... Um, one of the things that no one's really pointing out uh, is that uh, a lot of people think, and with with reason, that w what's behind these bombings, uh, which were preemptive, uh, remember, these were preemptive, they were not in response to anything, but th what's behind these bombings is the fact that uh, Israel's going to be holding elections in November, and um, Lapid was, uh, was behind Netanyahu, slightly behind Netanyahu. And since the bombing, he's slightly ahead of Netanyahu. So that's sadly the way uh, you score political points in Israel is by doing things like these airstrikes, which kill so many civilians. Um, I also have some other examples of the kind of blatant uh, bias. So NPR, uh, and shout out to James North, who wrote a great piece on this at Mondo Weiss, but NPR said that Israel uh, bombed Gaza, quote, after at least 580 rockets were fired from Gaza, end quote. And that's just not true. So I don't know if NPR was mm. lying or they were just mistaken, but not a single rocket was fired from Gaza until hours after the bombing started. Um, the New York Times uh, attributed it to... Uh, can, they said the bombing, the conflict can be linked back to a spike in violence across Israel and the West Bank several months ago. I don't know where that is coming from, but that's just a weird way to kind of obfuscate uh, and, and whitewash that this was something very much perpetuated by Israel. Um, another thing that the New York Times did was claim that Hamas had, quote, seized control of Gaza. And again, you doesn't really matter what you think of Hamas. They won elections. They're in power because they won elections. Um, the quote that uh, Kasim uh, uh, referred to is probably the most, like, one of the most outrageous and misleading ones, which is Palestinian Islamic Jihad 
militants fired a barrage of rockets at Jerusalem in fighting that has killed at least 31 people. I mean, making it seem like this was instigated by Palestinians. Um, and another interesting comparison is looking at uh, uh, the way Ukrainians and Palestinians are presented. So a Reuters piece says, uh, one headline says, Palestinian militants fire rockets at Israel after airstrike on Gaza. And compare that to this headline about Ukrainians, which says, outgunned but defiant, Ukrainian Twin Cities defenders ready for Russian attack. So in one case, they're defenders, and in the other case, they're militants. Mm. And the New York Times bias was so bad uh, that Jewish Voice for Peace has organized a letter writing campaign uh, because the New York Times published this something called uh, a piece called a ceasefire holds after a three day Gaza conflict colon key takeaways. And somehow none of these key takeaways mentioned the Palestinian deaths. None of them mentioned Israel's 15 year blockade of Gaza and uh, the fact that Palestinian hospitals almost closed after fuel shortages. Yeah, I, I think we had a guest on last week who described the sequence of events when we talked about this as Israel arresting this figure linked to terrorism, and then a Palestinian response, and then an Israel response, and so, and by the way, some of the Palestinian rockets falling actually in Palestinian territory, and Hamas actually not saying anything. We talked about how Hamas not taking a stance on this was indicating that because they don't like the other the the other group, the the one described as a, a terrorist group. Is, is that is that a wrong? kind of analysis of the timeline because that's, that's what the guest we had on who I can't remember what their name was described yeah, it as. Yeah, I mean, I would say that's incorrect because, I mean, even objective, uh, you know, objective news reporting is saying that this is preemptive. Um, this was, again, I think Israel likes to constantly say, we, don't we have the right to defend ourselves? Yeah, sure, you have the right to defend yourselves, although it is an illegal occupation. So actually that's even up for, for debate. But, you know, preemptive strike where you kill, murder civilians uh, is not self-defense. And, you know, they violate international law constantly. Also, we have to remember that Israel is not always, uh, to put it kind of diplomatically, forthcoming. I mean, they claimed that they had footage of Shireen Abu Akleh being killed by Palestinians. They presented a video of that. The Israeli government did. They had to walk that back. So we have to also be very skeptical about the um, kind of official narrative that we get from the Israeli government, especially because the media and American politicians are so, uh, as they themselves point out constantly, we have such a special relationship with this country. So the, the media and politicians, and of course the media and politicians, there's a feedback loop, but they're very, uh, they're loads to criticize Israel. As we're, you were reading through the list of those uh, biased headlines, it's striking how many of them are from obviously liberal institutions, but even places like in NPR that, you know, in my own recent political evolution, I still consider to be much more trustworthy than something like the New York Times or much more inclined to be sensitive to the kind of biases that have now snuck into their headlines. Um, and it, it, is, it is interesting to me as a leftist because so often our conversations here on this show and elsewhere are bogged down by a presumption that my politics are aligned with those institutions like the New York Times and, the, and NPR. And it does increasingly feel like there is almost nowhere to turn outside of more niche, very online outlets. Um, if you want to have an accurate perception of what's going on in global politics, the propaganda does seem to be at an overwhelming level at this point, especially when you talk about that bus story. I mean, as an American, the obvious valence there to the Rosa Parks incident, the idea that something like that wouldn't be kind of front page news and really a damning slight on the behavior of a country with which we do have this very special relationship is kind of galling to me. How has that incident in particular been covered both here and how has it been received in Israel? I mean, I honestly, that was Haaretz that Robbie read from. So that's an Israeli uh, newspaper. Uh, I don't think it's, I, I heard about the story on Democracy Now!, uh, which is one of the few places that has reliable coverage of this. Uh, I want to also say that uh, if you, fair, fairness and accuracy um, in reporting, which full disclosure, I've written a bunch for them, but they have great uh, coverage of this bias and they have a piece by Adam Johnson. Adam Johnson also is great at the, uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to this issue. Uh, he, he has a piece from 2018, NPR runs IDF playbook spinning killing of 17 Palestinians. So um, 
they what they do a lot and this is a good sign that you're reading something that's biased uh is they refer to clashes Mm. clashes of course makes it kind of seem like it's both sides as opposed to uh instigated by one side so they do that um uh, they link the the right of return to calls from Hamas, even though the right of return was something that was very organic and decentralized and organized by people who have nothing to do with Hamas. Um, so that's something else to bear in mind. Uh, in terms of like where to find, I think, fair coverage uh, on, on this conflict, I would say the Electronic Intifada is a great resource. And I would also say Mondo Weiss is a great resource. Fair is great on this as well. But okay. it's sad. It's like a short, a small number of places. And yeah, this would be you. You would think that if it were politically convenient, the the bus story would be front and center headlines because it's so atrocious and it's so reminiscent of Jim Crow. And it's such a perfect example of how this is an apartheid state. Katie Halper, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. And we'll be back with more rising in just a minute.